Tanish, there's nothing more frightening than watching someone gasping for their breath. And despite the fact that we live on a windswept island off the west coast of Europe, every day four people die in Ireland due to poor air quality. And two of the key underlying statistics when it comes to these deaths are, firstly, that one in five children in Ireland have asthma, and one in 13 adults have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, which is a disease that makes it uh, hard to move air and in and out of your lungs. And while there is so much that can be done to manage COPD, just one in 45 adults in Ireland have been diagnosed with the condition. In fact, the vast, vast majority of people are only diagnosed when they present uh, with a medical emergency. And that is why Ireland has the highest hospital admission rate in the developed world uh, for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is twice the OECD average. And this is conservatively costing our health service 120 million euro each year in hospital admissions alone. But as I say, so much can be done to manage COPD. And one of the most innovative initiatives in the world is the Warmth and Wellbeing Pilot Scheme, which I launched as Minister back in 2016. This pilot aimed to improve health and well-being outcomes of people in Dublin suffering from chronic respiratory disease through a home energy efficiency retrofit by making homes warmer and more energy efficient. Last week, TDs and Senators were presented with the results of that pilot, which was independently analysed by the academic researchers from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. The empirical evidence shows that, among other things, uh, there was a reduced usage of GP, emergency department and hospital services, and a reduced volume of prescribed drugs. A win for our climate, a win for our health services, and most importantly, a win for people with chronic conditions such as asthma and COPD. And yet, there is no targeted investment in retrofitting these homes. And the Warmer Home Scheme uh, for those in fuel poverty has a waiting list of nearly three years. So my question to you, Tarnished, is when are we going to properly manage chronic illness such as COPD and asthma? And when are we going to properly support globally significant innovative pilots such as the Warmth and Wellbeing Scheme to address poor health outcomes in a comprehensive way. I just want to thank Deputy Nocton for raising this uh, important issue, and I know he's doing a lot of work uh, as an advocate to highlight um, this matter. Uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, uh, formerly known as emphysema or bronchitis, has a considerable impact on the quality of life of the patient, families and carers. The course of the disease involves ongoing medical care, uh, and in certain patients results uh, in frequent hospital admissions. It's estimated that nearly 400,000 people in Ireland are living with COPD, but only about 100,000 have been diagnosed. And I think, last and Corla, that's extraordinary if you think about it. Um, as many as three quarters of people uh, with COPD have the symptoms but have not been diagnosed and therefore are, not being, are probably not being treated or are not being treated optimally. Uh, roughly 1,500 patients die every year uh, as a result of COPD and it results in about 15,000 hospital admissions. The COPD model of care was developed by the HSC back in 2019, and that redefined the way health services for people with COPD are provided. The National Clinical Programme for Respiratory Medicine launched the guideline for the management of COPD in November of last year. Through the implementation of these guidelines, the health service ensures that the right care is delivered to people with COPD at the right time and in the right place in line with Solange care. The Chronic Disease Management Programme provides a structured management programme for people who have done one or, who have one or more specific chronic disease, of which COPD is one. The programme commenced in 2020 and is being provided now to all adult GMS patients. Through the CDM contract, GPs are funded to provide structured reviews and interventions in line with the model of care. Uh, as of the 1st of October this year, 43,000 GMS patients 
uh, received planned care from their GP in the community. Uh, the model of care also provides a continuum of patient-centred specialist respiratory integrated care across both community-based ambulatory care hubs uh, and their associated hospital. <coughs> Through the Enhanced Community Care Programme, funding has been secured for 30 ambulatory care hub-based specialist respiratory teams, consisting of 295 staff and about 100 dedicated pulmonary, pulmonary, pulmonary res rehabilitation providers. A rollout of these services has commenced in many areas and recruitment is underway to fill the remainder of the posts. These teams include dedicated specialist physios and nurses who provide a comprehensive intervention with patient assessment and tailored therapies, including exercise, training, education and self-management. Thank you. Before the pandemic, uh, respiratory consultations made up 15% uh, of GP attendances. And while res respiratory diseases account for just under 6% of inpatient discharges, they account for over 12% of the bed days used uh, in our hospitals. And yes, the developments in relation to the chronic disease management programme are very welcome for conditions such as asthma and COPD. But the difficulty is, Thornishta, what happens when the GP makes that referral? Because you then end up in an air code lottery. For example, there is a stark contrast in the number of people waiting over 12 months for an outpatient respiratory appointment in the regions compared to uh, here in Dublin, resulting in far poorer health outcomes. So when will we address this air code lottery? Thanks, um, uh, thanks, Deputy. I, I suppose you know the idea is to uh, try to manage COPD, diabetes, hypertension, heart failure, uh, other chronic illnesses as much as possible in the community. And if those diseases are well managed in the community, and they can be in the vast majority of cases, the number of hospital admissions uh, then uh, is very low. But there will always be people who need uh, specialist care who need to see a consultant, uh, who need a hospital admission. Um, and it is, it is absolutely wrong uh, that there should be a major discrepancy in waiting times to see a specialist in one region of the country versus the other. Um, and that's not justifiable. And part of the move towards the uh, regional health areas is to deal with that, uh, to make sure that uh, we establish regional health areas across the country um, and that funding is based on the population uh, and the medical needs of the people in, in those areas uh, so that uh, funding can be rebalanced uh, in an appropriate way. Um, and that's something I think we need to, need to really work on the next year or two.